Got no kids, uh, which is pretty great. Crushing the uncle game, though. You know, I got two uh, adorable nieces, nine-year-old twin girls. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't like when you do that, but. <laughs> Okay, well, what is your name so I can know uh, what list to add your Facebook profile to tonight? What's that? To the Uncle Game. Oh, to the Uncle Game, for sure. Yeah, and just, you know, timing is everything, you know, so maybe wait for me to, you know, comment on something that lines up with that and then be, and then be like, fucking yeah, you know, uncles. Or say, maybe be like, uncles are cool, you know. But you have to understand what it sounded like from my perspective. And I'm like, I've got two nine-year-old nieces that I love, and you're like, yeah! Yeah! Woo! Fuck yeah! It's my favorite age, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's... But they're great, and they have no filter, which is um, a cool place to be as a, as a person, where you just fucking, you're not cognizant of feelings being at stake when you say things. They're just fucking, they just say it. They, they, whatever they want. They're just like, here it is, and fucking, here it comes. <laughs> and they're shooting a lot of truth darts to the heart, and, uh, and it's tough. I was driving them to swimming practice. It was dead silent in the car. One of them just goes, Uncle Adam? I go, yeah, what's, what's going down? She goes, I'm, I'm sorry you don't have a wife yet. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Mind your fucking business. <laughs> the hell? I don't tell you how to color, okay? Stay in your lane, sweetheart. I saw you make a tree purple last week. I didn't say shit. <laughs> They're amazing, too. They've got uh, a bunch of little shitty friends, which I hate. I hate pretty much all of them. They got all these seven, eight, nine year old spazzy bastards that just um, follow them around at the park. You know, probably that boy girl just flirting this where they'll throw pine cones at my niece's head and they're like, yeah. And my sister's like, it's just because they like him. I'm like, I'm going to fucking tackle that kid to the ground and throw his backpack in the ocean. They got a friend named Nathan. He's always popping out of bushes to scare me. He's a bush popper. These are the worst type of kids where he knows I'm coming, right? And he'll just fucking hide and I can hear him giggling. And he's like little fat kids who he's just like, <laughs> like just fucking, you know, little fat whispers and whimpers. And then all of a sudden I'll walk by and he'll go, ah! and I'm like, fuck, dude. He's always taunting me with his bullshit skills. I bet I can skip rocks better than you. I'm like, I bet you can, Nathan. You don't do shit all day, all right, man? <laughs> Fuck off. Got plenty of time to hone your skipping skills, dude. I got a friend named Gary who's eight. <laughs> Yo, if you're Gary and you're eight, you better figure that shit out real quick. <laughs> oh, why do you not work at a body shop already, Gary? You're wasting time. <laughs> you know what you're gonna do. This kid always smells like soup for some reason. It's like, it's like, dude, do a chowder check before you leave the house. It's your one job. He's like, I love broccoli cheddar. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's fucking dripping from your earlobe, you know? Take a bath. Even his haircut sucks. To me, that is a strong indication that Gary is a piece of shit. Even the barber got a sense of Gary's energy and was like, boom, boom, fuck this kid, he sucks. And I want his head to reflect that. All right, I, uh, I, I did, a, a couple months ago, I went through a breakup, it sucked. But uh, I was dry. this is how it went down. I'm driving around with my soon-to-be ex-boyfriend, and we get into some shitty-ass fight. He says something dumb, and I was just like, you know what, fuck this guy. And I'm driving my car, and I was like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I know we have a lot of fun together, but I'm not actually having fun with you anymore. And I have nothing but respect and love for you, but I can't do this anymore. We pull up in front of his apartment, and I said, you know what, no. Your darkness is becoming my darkness. <laughs> And I can no longer bear to carry the weight of your demons. <laughs> After I said that, I was like, damn, bitch, you're so smart. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> But then he started crying, and then he's, uh, then I started crying after he started crying, and I'm in front of his house, and I was just like, you fucking get out of the car, just go, just, we need to break up now. And he was like, babe, no, please, I don't wanna break up now, please, let's just be together one last time, just come into my apartment, I just wanna be with you one last time. And I was like, no, no. Are you kidding me? Look around. There is, there is nowhere to park. <laughs> never any parking in your neighborhood. And he was like, babe, no, it's, it's okay. We're gonna find a spot. I'll help you find a spot. And I was just like, no, fuck, okay. So then we're driving around his neighborhood and we're looking for parking and we're also crying and fighting but also trying to read all the parking signs. I was like, all right, hold on. Like, fuck you for one second, but also help me figure this out. No parking from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Towway zone from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. Every other Monday of the month. Permit parking only from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. What the fuck? Why is this so hard? Why? And he 
was like, babe, it's okay, just drive down Willoughby. There's always parking on Willoughby. I was like, oh, hell no, there better be then. So we drive down Willoughby and we finally find a little spot. And he's like, all right, you can park there. Just, you can park in that spot. And I was like, I can't fuck it. I'm gonna have to parallel park and you know that I'm bad at that. He was like, it's okay, I'll help you. It's like, all right, that's the first time you've ever offered to help me with anything, but let's start now. <laughs> so he gets out of the car and he's crying and I'm inside of my car crying. We're both just crying, but he's also trying to back me up into this spot. So I'm looking in the rear view and he's like, all right, babe, you fucking got this, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like a little bit just like just don't hit the curb just like don't fucking don't hit the curb and I was like I'm not gonna hit the fucking curb and I hit the curb because I always do <laughs> mm. but we park and I get out of my car and we walk back to his apartment and we're kind of silent and crying and we get inside and we sit on his bed and he looks at me and he takes my hands and he says you know if this is the end I just wanna let you know, like there are so many things that we didn't get to do together. We never went to that dope taco truck by my dad's. You never came to one of my dodgeball games. We never even did anal. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried to get out of a relationship and ended up doing anal instead. <laughs> mm. But it is not worth the $75 parking ticket that I got on Willoughby. I used to sell crack, that's a fact. It's, let's, that's how we jumping off for the next joke, okay? Good, you're on board. I used to sell crack, and uh, my dad used to smoke crack, and I figured if I was gonna have a dysfunctional family, so were y'all niggas. And so, I used to sell crack, and me and my boy was out selling crack one day. I've known this guy since I was seven years old. This lady walks up to us and she goes, hey, I get paid tomorrow, can you hook me up today? And my boy says to her, what are you willing to do? And she says to my boy, anything. And my boy says in response to that, <clears throat> oh, well then holler up my ass. What? <laughs> he said that out of his mouth to a fucking person. He said, <laughs> he said holler up my ass. I speak English, nigga. I know what all of those words mean individually. Holler up my ass. I don't know <laughs> what they mean in that order. What the fuck are you saying? Holler up my ass. I, in context, I couldn't figure this shit out. You mean cut your ass up? What the hell is you trying to say? I didn't know. And here's what pissed me off the most. That lady looked right at him and said, okay. Bitch, how you know what it means? <laughs> now I'm angry and I can't figure out whether I should leave because this shit seems too intimate for me. <laughs> or if I should say, because I need to tell a story later, you know. And, and I'll stand there and my boy pulls his pants and his underwear down right under his butt cheeks like he's an Instagram model trying to make his ass look fatter. <laughs> And then this, and this lady gets down on one knee like she's about to propose to his balloon knot. And she takes her thumbs and she spreads his ass cheeks apart. She gets right up in there and she goes, ah! And my boy goes, And that's when I stopped selling crack. I didn't sign up for that shit. <laughs> Niggas want some sneakers. The fuck is we doing, you know what I mean? You gotta call somebody and tell them that story. You can't walk around with that on your spirit by yourself. <laughs> Don't nobody know but me, Paul, and the ass hollering? No, somebody need to know. And I can't call my girlfriend and be like, hey, you know Paul that come over the house and play the game sometime. <laughs> yeah, the one that like your henny wings. Yeah, that one. Yeah, he like to get his ass hollered up. <laughs> Well, no, I don't know how to explain it better than that, baby. He just, it's self-explanatory. It's ass hollering. I know it sounds crazy. I could. I don't give a fuck who you are or who you represent, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. There has to be a party that says, we might have fucked up on this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, you guys, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I definitely will like support this man's position, but I don't like this motherfucker 
personally. Do you guys understand? Like it started with the border. Like I knew there was some shit going on with the border and the Mexican people, how he talked so bad about the Mexican people early on. And they, this whole fence situation, $18 billion to build a fence along the Arizona and California border to keep the Mexican people out. $18 billion? Can't we just buy Mexico for $18 billion? <laughs> shit they got over there. What the fuck, you know what I mean? Make it a state, right? George Lopez could be the governor, huh? They already got a state flower, cilantro. <laughs> Mexican people are the most resourceful people on the planet. They do the most with the least. They don't give a shit about no $18 billion wall. $18 billion? I know Mexican people don't pay for car insurance. You think they give a shit about an $18 billion wall? I had a Mexican dude run into me on the five the other day. Tore the back of my car up, jumped out of his car, opened up his trunk, bought a paint booth, a bumper cover, and two other Mexicans, and fixed my shit on the spot. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine, it's okay, it's cool. <laughs> it's good, look, it's nice. <laughs> it's like canoe, huh? It's like canoe, huh? It's good. Then a the motherfucker asked me to give him a Yelp review. I said, what the fuck is this? Happening? Here's a drinking tip for you people that are drinking tonight. Don't drink Coors beer. I live in Colorado now. I pee in the water when I fish. <laughs> this has been a public service announcement. <laughs> Nobody in Colorado drinks Coors. We ship that shit out of state. <laughs> I'll give you the history of beer. Here's how it works. Canadians make moosehead. They ship it to the Rockies. We drink that, pee in the water. That water gets turned into Coors. Coors gets shipped to lower states. They drink Coors, pee off the side of their bass boat. That flows down to Texas and they make Lone Star. People drink Lone Star and piss off. <laughs> that water flows down to Mexico. They make Corona and they ship it back to all y'all. <laughs> And you're like, ooh, that needs a lime. <laughs> that tastes like piss. I, um, I'm 5'10", but my voice is 6'5". <laughs> Just get that out the way now. Just get that out the way right now. Yeah. For real. And like, I knew my voice was deep when my homeboy hit me up and he was like, hey, yo, read me a bedtime story. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and I was like, bruh, I'm not reading you a bedtime story unless you say please. <laughs> That's, for real, y'all, because I don't like rude people, y'all. Like, I really don't, man. I really don't. But, like, to be honest with you guys, it's not, it's not fun sounding like this. Like, it's not fun because, like, people always say messed up things to me because, like, I was on this comedy show, and after the show, this lady came up to me, and she was like, oh, my gosh, you sound so handsome. And I was like, <laughs> she looking right looking right at me. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So I called my dad, because I know my dad been through some shit. If you smoke crack, you've seen some shit. You know what I mean? So I called my dad. I said, hey, man, I need to talk to you. He said, I need to talk to you, too. Come to the house. So I get to my dad's house. He looks like he's seen a ghost. I said, shit, man, you go first. He said, all right, uh, look, the other day, me and my boy was out getting high, and we ran out of cash. We had to go to the ATM machine. I said, dad, let me stop you right there. You don't have to say ATM machine because the M in ATM is for machine, which you effectively said was ATMM, and that's just stupid. He said, shut the fuck up, it's my story. I said, fair enough, continue. He said, we at the ATM machine. And this guy pulls up, he says, hey, before you get your cash out, cancel that, you can come party with me for free. I look at my boy, my boy looks at me, he says, sounds good, let's roll. You get in the car. He said, you should know this dude is gay. I said, why should I know that? He said, put a pen in it. It's going to make sense later. I said, oh, shit. He said, we get to his house, son, and immediately I'm uncomfortable because when I sat down on the couch, there was a 12-inch dildo on the mantel place looking directly at me. 
I said, Dad, dildos can't see. He said, shut the fuck up. It had one eye and it was looking directly at me. He said, then the dude said, I need to go in the room and slip into something more comfortable. And I was confused because he was wearing a velour tracksuit. And we gonna be honest, there's nothing more comfortable than a velour tracksuit. But then he came out and he was wearing a kimono that was so short, I could see that one of his balls was deformed, but I didn't want to say nothing because I was too busy having a staring contest with this one-eyed dildo. And the dude said, I got an announcement to make. You can smoke as much as you want all night long. The only thing is, you have to allow me to suck your dick. I said, what did you say, Dad? He said, honestly, I didn't even hear him at first. <laughs> I was too busy having a staring contest with this one eye builder. But then I saw something white moving in my periphery and I looked over and my boy was in some tidy whities smoking a rock, getting a blowjob. I stood up and I said, ah, uh, I need to go to the ATM machine. And my boy said, I'm coming too. But I didn't hear him say two. I just heard him say, I'm coming. So I ran, I slapped the dildo off the metal place, I locked the door behind me, I got in the car, and I left that motherfucker right there. <laughs> Thing about those two stories, both of them 100% true. Six months ago, I was in Virginia doing a show. My dad came, brought a bunch of my family with him. At the middle of that story, right at the point where I said, lock the door, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was the same day you was gonna tell me about Paul getting his ass hollered up? <laughs> That's crazy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 